Okay, today we're going to continue on with Module 3, Lesson 8, which is understanding the function of parentheses and applying it to solving problems. You will need your whiteboard, your online whiteboard, or your whiteboard dry erase marker and dry eraser for today's lesson. It's going to be a little bit different of a teaching style, so we're going to do a couple problems together. I'm going to want you to write on your whiteboards with me as I'm doing it so that you can become more familiar with the process. As you can see, we're going to start out with some examples of adding and subtracting because I noticed that there were a lot of students struggling with that yesterday. Adding and subtracting should be familiar to you already. We spent some time on it in the last module doing our stack it and add it and stack it and subtract it. So the only real new part to what we've been doing with this IXL skill is the parentheses. So it's figuring out what you need to do first and following all the correct steps. Okay, but we are gonna do a little bit of a review of what the stacking and adding and stacking and subtracting looks like, just so that you can have that fresh in your head to help you with finishing that IXL skill today. So first, let's look at our problem. 44 minus 28, which is in parentheses, plus 29. I know I have to do parentheses first, so we're going to start with this part of the problem. 44 minus 28. First, I'm going to stack it and subtract it. 44 minus 28. Notice how my tens and my ones line up perfectly. Okay, my two is right below my four, my eight is right below my four. Okay, make sure you're going to want to be writing this along with me so that you're getting that practice. Now, I have to do four minus eight. If I put up four fingers, I cannot take away eight fingers because I only have four fingers. So I need to borrow from the tens place. I'm going to borrow from the tens place. I'm going to borrow one ten. Four minus one is three. So I'm going to change that to a three. Now I borrowed one ten. So now I'm going to move that one ten over to the ones. I have one ten, the one that I borrowed, plus the four that I started with. So I have one four. So I have 14 now in the ones place. Now that I have 14, I can take 8 away. 14 minus 8 leaves me with 6. So I'm going to put a 6 in the ones place. Now I can move to the tens place, and I have 3 minus 2, and that equals 1. But that's not the answer I type in IXL because I have not finished. I did figure out that this part of the equation equals 16. But I still need to add 29. So I'm going to take the 16, which is the answer I just figured out from the parentheses, and I'm going to add it to 29. Notice my 2 is right below my 1, and my 9 is right below my 6. Now I'm going to start in the ones place. I'm going to add six plus nine. Six plus nine gives me 15. But I can't write 15 in my answer because that's two digits and I only have enough space to write a digit in the ones place. So I'm gonna write 15 as one, five. With my one, in the tens place on the line, because I still need to use it, and my five in the ones place as part of my answer. So six plus nine is 15. That's where I get this one five. Now I can go in the tens place and I'm gonna add one plus two plus one. So one plus two plus one. Go ahead and solve that on your whiteboard.
Okay, so you add 1 plus 2, which is 3, plus 1 more is 4. So you should have ended up with 45. Now we have solved the entire equation, so 45 would be the answer that you type in IXL. Okay, go ahead and erase your whiteboards. We're going to do one more example together, and then I will let you have some more work time on that IXL skill. So this one has two different parentheses. So I need to solve this parentheses, and I need to solve this parentheses. Then I need to subtract those two answers that I get. So first, let's solve 61 plus 1. I'm going to stack it and add it, although this might be one that you can just do in your head. First, I add up my 1s. 1 plus 1 is 2. And then my 6, I have nothing else to add to it, so I still have 6. So I figured out this answer equals 62. Now let's go ahead and set up my other one. My other set of parentheses is 37 plus 9. Notice again how my 1s are lined up. The 9 is right under the 7. I don't want to line the 9 up under the 3 because that would be adding 9 tens, which is 90, and we only have 9, so we want to make sure that stays in the 1s. We're adding 9 plus 7. 9 plus 7 is 16. So I'm going to write that as 1, 6, 16. But notice how I put my 1 in the tens place on the line because I still need to add it to everything else that's in the tens place. The 6 is my answer in the ones place. So now I go to the tens place and I have 3 plus I have to add my 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. So now I've figured out that this answer equals 46. Now, well, all that's left is to solve from left to right. So I start over here and I move this way. 62. If you remember, they did say that in the video too. Remember, moving from left to right. So I have 62 minus 40. Six. My tens are lined up and my ones are lined up. Step one is starting the ones. Two minus six. If I have two fingers, I can't take away six fingers. I only have two. Okay, so I need to borrow. I'm going to borrow from the six. I'm just going to borrow one ten. 6 minus 1 is 5. I take that 110 that I borrowed, and I'm going to put it in front of the number in my 1's place. So there's my 110 that I borrowed, and then there's the 2 that I originally had in the 1's place. I had a 2. Now I have 12 minus 6. Okay, I'm going to give you just a minute to solve this subtraction equation, and then we'll go over how we solved it.
Okay, let's go ahead and go over what you got, see if your answer matched mine. So first we start in the ones, 12 minus six is six, five minus four is one. So the answer you should have got that you would type in IXL is 16. Okay, so you can see that there's a lot of steps. By now you should be pretty familiar with how to add and subtract those double digit numbers. And the only tricky part that we're really dealing with right now is figuring out what part to solve first, which is always going to be in parentheses. So you're going to do the parentheses and then you're going to move left to right to solve. Okay, now go ahead and erase those whiteboards. We're going to continue working on the same IXL skill that you were doing yesterday, skill N2, understanding parentheses. Go ahead and begin.